What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panuta for tutorials.eu. In this video, you are going to learn how to use the keywords async and await in C Sharp. They are very important when it comes to multitasking and they're going to be super important for your career if you want to become an advanced C Sharp developer. So before we get started with the video, please hit that like button. It really helps us out and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you have any ideas, then leave them in the comments down below. So now let's get started with the course. So now let's get started with the content. And now let's get started with the tutorial. All right, so let's look at asynchronous programming. Normally any code runs straight along with only one thing happening at once, line by line. If a method calls another method, it has to wait for the other method to finish and return. And until that happens, the entire program is essentially stopped from the perspective of the user. Even the UI would freeze and look unresponsive until the task is done. This is where asynchronous programming comes in handy. Asynchronous programming is a means of parallel programming in which a unit of work runs separately from the main application. Now, when should we make our apps run tasks in parallel? Well, let's look at the following real world scenario from the MS doc. So imagine we are cooking breakfast. We want to make coffee, eggs and bacon with some toast and jam and some juice to wash it all down. If we wait for each task to be done in order to move on to the next task, it will take, let's say, around 30 minutes. But if you think about it, we don't need to wait for the eggs to be done in order to fry the bacon. This is a synchronously prepared breakfast, as you can see here. We can actually speed up the process and optimize it using asynchronous methods. So now using the asynchronous method, we can first pour the coffee, then start with frying the eggs and the bacon as well, as well as turning on the toaster at the same time. Once the toast is done, we can put some jam on it, then pour the juice and the breakfast is ready. So tasks that do not depend on other tasks like frying the eggs and the bacon can be started together. Tasks that depend on other tasks like putting jam on toast must wait for the toasting step to be done. Of course, don't forget to take off the eggs and bacon so you don't burn them. This whole process will take less than 20 minutes thanks to the asynchronous method of preparing breakfast. So how can we apply this approach to our programs? Well, asynchronous programming can be achieved in C-sharp using the async and await keywords. The async modifier is used to specify that a method, lambda expression or anonymous method is asynchronous. Now, when we want to wait for the async task to finish, to continue on with the execution of our code, we need to await the task using the await operator or keyword. So the await operator suspends evaluation of the enclosing async method until the asynchronous operation completes. Once we are done waiting for an operation to finish, we will get the result of the awaitable task. For example, we can await an async task, which will download a text file online and the results of the awaited task will be a string representing the text file. Actually, Let's see this example in action where we will be fetching different text files in an async manner. All right, so in Visual Studio, I have set up a program and let me run it real quick because, well, it's just going to say hello world. So this is a default console application, nothing too fancy. What I'm more interested in is going to be the following location. So now that it's built, I can actually move over to the path in the file explorer. So I'm going to specifically go to the .NET 5 debug bin folder inside of my project folder, because that's where I want to store my dog file. My dog file is just going to be a text file. Let me check it out here. And it's going to look something like this. You see the beautiful Doge here. So that's going to be our Doge. And I would like to print that Doge onto my screen. So in order to do that, I first of all need to make sure that I'm using system.io. So the input output namespace, which allows me to read files, for example. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And then I want to use multi-threading, which means I want to do stuff asynchronously and stuff. So therefore I'm going to need the tasks 
namespace here. So system threading tasks. Now let's define a new async method that will await the task of loading a local file. So let's go ahead and I'm going to also make it static because I want to load it from the main method. I want to call it from there and that's why I need to make it static. Otherwise I would have to create objects and stuff. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to add that async keyword here because this is now going to be an asynchronous method and it's going to return a task. Now I'm going to call this one summon dog locally. So it's going to summon our beautiful doge here. And I'm just going to write some text saying summoning dog locally dot 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 so that we know that the next information is going to be in fact my dog. And then I want to get the file from my PC. So I'm going to use a new string where I'm going to store that data and I'm going to get it from file dot read text. So read all text. But because I want to do this asynchronously and this task method summon dog locally is going to be async, I'm going to use read all text async. So asynchronously opens a text file, reads all text in the file with a specified encoding and then closes it. So that's exactly what I want. And what do I want to do it with? Well, with the dog dot text file. Okay, we have this file. Now this by itself won't work because this needs to be awaited. So cannot implicitly convert system threading task string to string because this is just a string now that we are storing it in, but we need to make sure that we await it. So now we are awaiting this task to be done, but we're not blocking the thread for it. So that means we are not blocking the main thread and this will load in the background. And once it's done, it will be stored in this dog text. And now I'm just going to display this talk, doc text on my console. So console write line doc summoned locally. And here, this is going to do the reading for me. So since this is an asynchronous method, we need to return a task, as you can see here. And returning a task like this is equivalent to a void method. Since we are printing the content of the file directly inside the method, if we would to actually return the string to the main method, then we would return task string. So here, let's say we were to return this dog text here, return dog text, like so, this wouldn't work because this is a void method now. So if I wanted to return the string, I would have to add this keyword here, maybe not with a capital I, but more like this. So this would be a way to return the dog text, but I'm going to copy this method and get rid of this part because I don't want to actually do it. Okay, so this one here will be our method that returns stuff. You saw how it works, right? And this one is going to be the one that we are actually going to use here. All right, now that we have our beautiful method here, summon dog locally. Let's actually do it real quick just to see how good our doge is going to look like. And we see we have our beautiful doge that is summoned locally. All right, so that worked. But now let's actually get the data from an, a URL. Okay, so I want to load the data using an HTTP request. So if I want to use HTTP requests, meaning load data from the internet, I need to add this namespace here, system.net.http. Now let's create a method that will get a dog or summon a dog, but not locally, but actually from a URL. So let me create a new method here and it's going to be called summon dog from URL. It's going to be a static async method that returns a task. So here, let me actually put this into a top line so it's more readable and this is going to be it. So static async task summon dog from URL, we're going to pass a URL to it and we're going to use this URL in order to then load it. So first of all, I'm going to say what I'm doing and I'm saying I'm summoning a dog from a URL. Then I'm going to create a new HTTP client object inside a using clause. This will make sure that the HTTP client object is disposed after we're done with it. Okay, so this is a neat little trick, very useful. So here using, and then in brackets, I'm gonna say var HTTP client 
So this will be an HTTP client object. So let's go ahead and actually create an HTTP client object like so. So now let's close this and actually do the code that we want to do with it or run the code. So now I'm going to use a similar code to what I did here with the dog text. So here let's use a string result that will await for the HTTP client to get me the string asynchronously. So now we just need to pass the URL like so. And then I'm going to just add the right line statement saying that I got my dog. So dog summoned from URL. All right, so this is pretty much the task here. You could of course also return the result by using the square or those brackets string here as well like we did earlier if you were to do that. In my case, I'm just going to execute the code straight away onto the console and I'm going to display it. So now in the main method, let's use those two methods. So first of all, I'm going to set up a new URL. It's going to be this URL, which is basically just the doggo readme file that we prepared. And I'm going to use that. So let's go ahead and not call this method like we did here. Because here, because this call is not awaited, execution of the current method continues before the call is completed. Consider applying the await operator to the result of the call. So you see, that was not the best approach. I just wanted to show you that. And now you will learn how to do it correctly. So first of all, I'm going to create a list of tasks. So I'm going to say I want to have a new list of task objects. And here I'm going to create it and this one will be summon dog locally and summon dog from URL. Like so. And here, summon dog from URL, of course, needs to have a URL that we pass to it. So I'm going to pass my URL that we have from here. So now that we are using a list of tasks, we get into a little problem here because our main method doesn't understand that. So we need to make sure that our main method is also going to be returning an async task, which means it's not going to return anything, but it's going to be an asynchronous method now, and it will return a task, which basically is like a void method. So it's just going to execute some tasks. So that doesn't fix the problem entirely, because now we also need to await the task dot when all tasks. So what does this when all do? When all creates a task that will complete when all of the task objects in an enumerable collection have completed. So this tasks here is in fact a list of tasks. So it is an enumerable. And then there was another reason why we get this error and that is because I haven't used this namespace here. System collections generic. So we need that here in order for this to work. Now here are some dog locally, maybe I should add those brackets in there. And now we're going to be able to execute those tasks. So now let's go ahead and run this. So let's run this code, see. And you see, first we had the doge here. It happens instantly, once again, and then well, almost instantly. And then we got the dog from the internet, so from this URL. Now we have these two beautiful doge. Well, one is a doge. I believe this one will probably be a German Shepherd. So now we have those two here. And this one was summoned from the URL. And the tasks were done asynchronously, which means they were done in parallel. All right, so now let's go ahead and also see how long this took. And therefore, I'm going to use the stopwatch class from the diagnostics namespace. So here, using system diagnostics. And now let's go ahead and define a stopwatch and start that stopwatch just before we start the task. So here, just after I created this URL stuff, I'm going to create my stopwatch and I'm going to start this stopwatch. So it's going to start counting and then it's going to execute those tasks. And now I want to stop the timer and display how much time it took to execute those tasks. Okay. And now let's run this once again with this. So we're using the S 
W and you see this task was done after 0 0.88 seconds. So let me run this again and this will be slightly different. You see this time it took 1.66 seconds. So this has to do with the speed of the internet connection and so forth. So you see this basically just says how long did it take to execute these two tasks. Because we started stopwatch, we stop the stopwatch and then we display how much time has passed in that stopwatch. And the stopwatch, by the way, is only possible through our diagnostics here. All right, so this by itself is nice and now you know how to run tasks asynchronously, but does it really show us that they are actually run in parallel? Because it's always that our Doge is there before our other dog. So what can we do for that? in order to test it properly, whether they are actually running in parallel. Because here you could still say, hey, summon dog locally is run first and then summon dog from URL. Well, let's actually test it by just adding a little sleep timer here. So I'm just going to say, wait for one second inside of my summon dog locally method. So I'm going to add this thread sleep. And if you want to use the thread class, you need to make sure that you have this namespace here, system.threading. And it's this one here. All right, now that we have it, let's run it again and see if our, you see, Doge was summoned locally slower because we waited for a second. So here our other dog was there before. And this entire process now took one second and, well, 60 milliseconds, I guess. So that should be it, right? And here once again. So it's pretty much always going to be close to this time because it probably takes roughly 50 milliseconds to load the Doge into our console application. And the other process by that time is already done. So now we are doing both processes in parallel, which is pretty cool. So you see, this is pretty much how you can build your asynchronous code and you can build your projects. Now, of course, this was a super simple example. We were just loading data either from a file or from the internet. But if we were to use a more complex example, it would still work. The concept is always the same. Add async task and if you need to return something, add this less than sign, then the data type that you want to return and uh, greater than sign. And then, of course, make sure that you return this type of data in any of the outcomes of your code here. All right, now you are pretty much ready to program asynchronously. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now you know how to use async and await in C Sharp. And if you like that video, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And also, I have a little challenge for you. What you should try to do now is to write the program that we wrote with a synchronous approach and then use the stopwatch class in order to compare how much time each of them took and also share that in the comments down below. So the comparison between doing it asynchronously, so multitasking and synchronously, so single tasking. Mm -hmm. All right, so good luck with that challenge and I hope to see you in the next video.